Okay, so maybe I'm being a little bit melodramatic with the thumbnail title of this video, but I can't help but notice that the changes in the Apache Flight model, some good, some bad, have in fact made me a liar. So if people go back and watch older videos that I've done to try to figure out how to do something in the Apache, uh, those things don't work anymore. Now, is this temporary? Is this going to be the way it is going forward? I kind of hope not. But let's take a look at the things I like and don't really like at all in the Apache Flight Metal update. Speed raise, pound six, you're cleared to engage. Lead is a rolling in, engaging south and north, left in, right out. Alright, so first let's talk about the things that I do like, and that is the fact that I don't have nearly as many Woe Boys as I used to, meaning uh, the force trim is responding in a way that doesn't necessarily result in the aircraft suddenly doing some sort of weird things. You're, you're still going to have some, some wayward yaw movement and things like that, but effectively it's a lot easier to make those transitions and to use your trimmer without worrying about the aircraft suddenly doing something just a little bit crazy. This is important when you're transitioning from forward airspeed to a slow airspeed, say you're trying to get into a battle position, something like that. Uh, it's a lot easier to make these transitions. In the time that I've been talking, I've hit the trimmer several times and haven't had it do anything kind of wild on me, which it has done in the past. You can see that I've got a pretty gradual descent and everything's under control. Hopefully I don't hit this tree over here. Uh, but we're, uh, we're not having any kind of crazy movements. And again, I've got uh, instant trim set uh, for how I do things. It's just the way that I like it uh, with this uh, hardware setup that I have. And I've talked about this in previous videos about uh, my setup and what I would recommend for other people's setup. The problem I have is when we get down here at a hover, and we'll talk about that here in a few minutes. Now, another thing that I like is we can actually hold down and interrupt the force trim, and sort of take it out of the equation. So I'm holding the button down uh, for this entire segment. Now, you're going to lose some control. Some things are going to get a little bit wobbly, and that's by design because you're effectively removing or reducing... Uh, the SAS and SCAS authority of your controls. So you're going to have a little bit more of a wobbly time. But the point is, uh, before, that we couldn't really interrupt the force trim in this way and we couldn't really effectively fly, not as well as we can now. Uh, you can actually hold the trimmer down and come in for a landing, uh, do an approach, things like that. So I, I think that's a positive, that's a good thing, and I think that's going to help some people out who might be having trouble with the force trim, like I did when I first started flying the Apache. I've said this before, that... Uh, particularly for landings and coming in on approach, I used to just kind of hold the, the button down and just, just ride the aircraft in without SCAS because it was a little bit more what I was used to f coming from flying Kiowas. Uh, so if you're having trouble figuring out how to use the force trim effectively, uh, this might be a way to do that. And now you can without the aircraft really getting too squirrely on you. Now again, I've been holding the trimmer down the entire time that I've been talking. I'm going to try to do an approach and prove my point and uh, continue to talk and entertain while I do it. I'm going to keep my flight path vector there. Of course, again, we're going to get a little bit wobbly because we are removing some of that authority that the aircraft has, uh, you know, that the aircraft will, will have over itself to kind of assist us. But we're not getting anything too crazy. Just keep that flight path vector down where we want to uh, terminate the approach. Bringing in the power, just making some, some changes here. Coming a little bit fast. Start pulling in the power just a little bit. Still holding down the trimmer. Still holding down the trimmer. I don't want to <laughs> transition to hover mode because I have to take my thumb off the trimmer. Uh, but we'll continue all the way down. And this is where we start to have problems. And that's what we're going to talk about next. Okay, nothing like being in an aircraft that beats itself to death. Luckily, we can just spawn in and try anew. Uh, but this is where I'm having trouble. Now, in previous videos, and this is where I'm basically becoming a liar, because in previous videos I've talked about the best way to take off in the Apache, and I still stand by it from the standpoint of it's kind of the way that you should do it in real life, uh, at least while you're still learning things and getting things figured out, uh, but it doesn't hold true anymore. So what I was recommending to people was to get the aircraft light, and I'm going to attempt to do this while talking. I'm going to attempt to do what I've been teaching for a really long time, as I get a little bit light, I start to figure out what the aircraft's doing. Okay, and I'm just pulling in a little bit of power. And I'm putting in left cyclic. I know you can't see that. I'll, I'll try it. But I'm putting in left cyclic. Look what the aircraft is doing. Okay, we're sliding to the right. 
I don't even have enough power to hover. We're sliding to the right. Okay, I'm putting in quite a bit of left cyclic just to counter that. Okay, so what used to happen was that the nose would go to the right, you know, and we'd have to put in some left pedal. We'd slowly bring the aircraft up, but she didn't slide over to the right. Okay, let's try and look at it from an external view. We're just sliding. So, something is amiss. Ground friction apparently no longer exists, and what I'm guessing is that we have an incredible amount of thrust coming out of the tail rotor, uh, which is just propelling the aircraft off to the side. Now, how do we counter that? So, of course, we're going to put in some left cyclic to counter that, and I'm going to try to put in enough to counter it. But I might put in too much, so now she starts to roll to the left. So it's very challenging to find that sweet spot. All right, so I'm going to re... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to zero out my trim. Okay, so I've zeroed it out. And I'm going to let it start sliding on me so I can put in that countering left cyclic. Okay, so in order for me to do that, I immediately come up in a position where now it's going to want to shoot off to the left because I've got so much cyclic in. So I've got to have so much left cyclic to counter that electric slide that we're going to do off to the right. This is very frustrating for me. This is very frustrating because it's hard to teach anyone how to do the right thing. And I think people are just going to get frustrated. So I want to address this because you might be watching this and you might be one of those people that's frustrated. Guess what? I'm frustrated for you. I don't think it's going to stay this way. I, please. God, don't let it stay this way. The only way that I have figured out to successfully take off, and it is not pretty, I hate it, it makes me feel gross every time I do it, is to just yank this puppy up. Now, of course, we're going to get this constant rotor RPM uh, notice that we were already getting before, but we're going to get it again. I'm just going to pop this puppy up. Okay, I just pull in a lot of power. Actually, I didn't get the rotor RPM. That's, that's a first. But I'm not taking it slow. Here's the problem. If you don't have any sort of muscle memory when it comes to how much pedal you probably should have in, then you're going to have a hard time, okay? If you don't have a good understanding of how much left pedal to put in, you're going to pop it up and you're going to do this, okay? And then you're going to be countering it and then you're going to get wobbly and you're going to get pissed off, all right? I don't have a solution for you. I wish that I did. The solution is get good. The problem is, of course, this flight model will probably change again and then you'll have to go back to learning some other way. So, all I'm doing is I'm putting in some pedal, I'm putting in a little bit of cyclic, and I'm just bringing that collective up. I'm just pulling it straight up. Okay, let the aircraft pop up. Okay, I can make it look relatively pretty, I guess. I've been doing it enough practicing, ready for this, uh, this video and this diatribe, but I'm not happy with it. I don't think it's right. I think there's just some sort of too much force coming out of the tail. It's the only thing I can think of. Um... I don't know how we're sliding. There, that's a friction issue. I mean, if we're sliding that much, we should probably be tipping over. But if you are in a position where the aircraft starts to roll on you, all I can say is either take that power out or pop that puppy into the air because otherwise you're going to start going for a ride. And of course, like we said, uh, or, or like we demonstrated, I should say, on that landing a few minutes ago, it's something you got to be ready for. So the only thing I can say to that is you got to counter it quickly by getting that puppy on the ground and not dancing around on the wheels. Alright guys, Casmo from the editing floor and I realized after I'd made this video that I forgot to test something because I'd seen some people talking about uh, the tail wheel and I wanted to check that out because it would sort of reinforce what I was saying regarding the, ta uh, the tail rotor. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and punch off the parking brake and I, my feet are completely on the floor. I'm not touching my pedals. Uh, and I'm going to unlock the tail wheel. And we're spinning. I've added zero power. You see, we're at 19% flat pitch. I'm not touching the cyclic. I'm not, I'm not touching any of my controls. The aircraft is just spinning. So that right away tells me that the issue is the tail rotor is just generating way too much thrust. Uh, which reinforces what I was saying earlier. Anyway, back to the video. So I'm going to try and demonstrate what I was talking about. I'm just kind of hitting the trimmer here, getting everything lined up. We're just going to uh, start at this uh, short final. Get my speed down, get that flight path vector down to where my intended touchdown point is. And just ride the shutter in, ride the aircraft down through ETL. 
We're at 70 feet, 20 knots, looking good. And what I'm going to do when I get on the ground is I might get that collective down flat. Because we can see that around 50, 60 percent torque is where we have trouble on the ground. So I need to get this thing down. Airspeed and altitude are about the same, and that's good. Okay. And now what I'm going to do, she can take it. I'm just going to put her on the ground. Just drop the collective. Okay. Just get it on the ground. Once you hit that, that boom. Don't try to be soft about it. She's got shock absorbers. She'll take it. Oh, and it's also a video game. You're not going to die. So just slam it down. You'll be good, and that'll prevent that rollover. Hopefully, we'll see a change in the flight model when it comes to this. Again, the air part, I like it. I'm on board. Um, it's taken some getting used to, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. But that tail rotor is killing me right now. Anyway, hopefully this was helpful for you guys. We'll talk to you later. Take it easy.